Hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Escaping Atheism here on the Max Cold Bay channel. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we are starting the planned schedule to hang out now. Um, this is a special episode of Deflating and Escaping Atheism. Say hi, Rob. Hey, hey. Rob will be, uh, of course, you want to find and subscribe to the Deflating Atheism channel, as well as the Ma Max Colbe channel. Do us a favor and give us a like and a subscribe. Please find us on escapingatheism.com and on Patreon. Uh, by the way, uh, Catherine Alexander is part of the Escaping Atheism team. Um, uh, we keep telling people, but nobody's listening. We're, we're, go we're up to 10 people on the Escaping Atheism team. Uh, we're going to have an 11th soon, uh, looks like, uh, uh, as we continue to grow. But Kathy here, Catherine Alexander. Um, is it Alexander you go by or Alexandria? I can't remember. Uh, Alexander, just because the Alexandria ended up being chopped off. It's kind of a long name. <laughs> it, it surely is. So I went with the, yeah. The first name back. Yeah. yeah, hi. Hi. Okay. Yes, yeah, after yeah, after St. Saint, Saint Catherine of Ale Alexandria. So, yeah. Right. And she's our webmistress. She's the one who's in charge of the escapingatheism.com domain. And she's quite a firecracker on Twitter. Have fun with her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to have some fun here today. We're going to be answering a guy named Grim Jim. Now I have a bit of a backstory with Grim Jim. I wanted to know I'm not mad at him or anything. Um, uh, although he was part of a huge gang of really nasty atheists who came after me a couple of years ago. He wasn't one of the nasty ones, but I was being dogpiled and completely attacked by a group of atheists for simply not accepting uh, 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 an overgeneralized uh, bunch of statements about um, other religions as, as well as standing fast on my own. I wasn't even trying to argue that much with anybody. Um, uh, and I was just slammed. It was a really bad coordinated attack, uh, uh, one of which many religious people have experienced in, in the last few years. I, I eventually came to find out I was not alone. I will say, though, he wasn't one of the nasty ones, particularly. It was, and then I never did get back to him because I had been slammed with a bunch of videos attacking me by name um, and saying all kinds of horrible shit about me. And I just, there was no way I could respond to all these people. It, it was really rather upsetting. But again, at the time, because I didn't know what was going on. Um, now I realize, of course, there is really an atheist community, a, a skeptic mafia, and they're a bit nasty and frequently organized. Although they have hangers on, and I think Jim here is probably a hanger on. He doesn't, I don't think he's part of that really nasty skeptic mafia that's out there. Um, I don't think he's high up in the PJ Kirk pecking order, for example. Anyway, too much back information. What have you been up to lately on deflating atheism, Rob? Uh, not a whole lot going on, but, but I'm going to have a, a special uh, surprise for the uh, escaping atheism team soon. Oh great! Also, I would like to I would like to request a, a, an extended dance mix of the summer banger. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a nice birthday present for me. I just have to <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, the dubstep remix. Yes, <laughs> the dubstep remix. One of my favorite videos on his channel, but just because I'm nerdy and weird, it's like a sound collage <laughs> thing. Every internet atheist ever. Okay, so I'm guessing that. The, the, the online atheist community is really, really, really not liking any of what we're doing, but unfortunately, we're here to stay and we're growing. Um, Jim here has some, he's one of my, you know, I'm an old school nerd, so he's got some Monty Python in here that I like. And why don't we start just playing it? How's that sound, guys? Sure thing. Everybody, anybody want to stop, just scream. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Let's share. Ah! <laughs> Let me off. Yeah, let's share the screen. Here we go. Monty Python. Oh! Oh. Hasty fist braids in your face. <laughs> All my sins, I occasionally watch the Escaping Atheism channel, the Max Colbay channel which are Dean Esme's latest projects since his gratuitous head injury at some point. Uh, it's thoroughly dishonest. It's nonsensical. It's um, just oh, so. stupid and petty and nasty, to be, to be quite honest. Mm. But 
occasionally they raise interesting questions, interesting questions that they don't end up actually answering, of course. Really? Why would we expect anything different? But there was one recently. Wait a minute. I'm just going to uh, 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 ask you right there for an example, pal. Please give an example of a question you asked in a reasonable context that you might actually have been answered. It, it is not fair to do that when you know somebody's being gay with dozens and dozens and dozens of people attacking him on Twitter, or during a time period when a whole bunch of people unprovoked, just because I said I didn't want to work with them, um, because I, I, I thought they were too extreme in their anti-religious views, um, and would not apologize for being Catholic, I was viciously attacked with tons of videos from people I didn't even know. Mm. So sorry I didn't get to you at that point, but Grim, if you have ever got a specific well, question, please ask it in a context where you know I'll see it and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other thing is, and I, this is pretty typical of, I don't watch even a fraction of these, but a bunch of assertions and then there's no evidence. Mm. Which lies? What is a lie? You know, which which statement is not true? Can you show that to me? No, it's just a bunch of emotion. Well, well I can assert yeah, all that. He, he, he's just he's just basically it's just insults. You know, I have yeah. Murray. I mean, I mean, he's just he's just slagging you for no particular reason at this point. Yeah. My guess is that yeah. his fans are after him to do it. I think. Yeah. I know an increasing number of atheists. There's so much chatter. It's always about me, too. And you know why it's always about me? Maybe about you, too, Rob. I don't know. Everybody else doing this work, working with us, and there's a lot of us, is anonymous. Um, and one of the things I find with atheists is they always want to go to the person, in, in other words, in the classic ad hominem fashion, rather than address what you've actually said. And I'm, yeah. I'm going to have to call you a little bit on that, Graham. Give an example. And, uh, you know, I may have been gratuitously snotty at you. I admit that, especially if it was on Twitter. Or I may have missed you or dismissed you. But if you're serious and you're asking a real question, let me know. Does, does, <laughs> does a gratuitous head injury lead to a gratuitous snobbiness or snobbiness? <laughs> <laughs> There's been a rumor floating around out there. Supposedly I took some head injury. Uh, no, uh, I was severely abused as a child, and I do have uh, – problems in my central nervous system and in, 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 in the, the back of my head. But I assure you, I have never suffered from delusions or schizophrenia or low IQ or, or any of that. Um, get nervous sometimes, have a generalized nervous disorder. But, you know, I don't even need to put that out there. But really, you want to suggest mental illness, I'll only, suggest, I'll only note that in your community, which is a community, it is common to ascribe mental illness to people who are not mentally ill. So that's yeah. as as the uh, as, as the Soviets did to our religious believers. Yes. Yes, but, the Chinese did. Yes. The Chinese did. Yeah. Yeah. But kind of going back to what uh, this is. Uh, this is my theory: is that yes, I, I mean, uh, uh, atheists don't tend to like uh, religious people or Christians, but I, I think they reserve a special vitriol. For the kind of uh, apostate ex atheists, because your mere existence uh, it kind of shatters their whole narrative that there's this that there's this inexorable movement towards atheism, you know? Yeah, none of the none of the none of the stats really bear that out. The only stats you can find pushing the idea that atheism is the wave of the future are like, frankly, they're like feminist wage gap statistics. They're easily debunked. Just make sure you're not getting your statistics from a site that calls itself atheist or skeptic or rationalist. How about, a, you know, something that's an actual scientific source? Try it. You're going to find. No. Uh, well, whatever. Um, shall we proceed? On with the show. Yeah. 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 All right. Here we go. About uh, indoctrinating children into, into atheism. And that wasn't what the angle was at all. It was about growing up in a, in a communist state, and communism and atheism are not the same thing. Yeah, Catherine, you're making some really loud noise. Nope. Sorry? <laughs> I was hearing why it was like you were blowing into it. I'll back up a little bit. It's not that big a deal. Just mark the mic. Here we go. Communism and atheism are not the same thing, though people seem to often make this mistake. But it raised uh, an interesting thought to me. But how would you indoctrinate someone into atheism. All right. 
I'll start. Anybody else who wants to jump in may do so. First, I feel, Jim, you are, I'll just call you Jim. I hope that's okay. Uh, I feel that you are deflecting um, because we were talking about how you indoctrinate children, and that's what they do in communist schools, or if you're raised by Marxists, that is specifically what they do, and you can read about it in multiple places. Um, it's not a secret. In fact, just so you know, at some point in the next few weeks, I will be interviewing a Dr. Cy Gart, who was very literally put through atheist indoctrination as a child by his communist parents. Now, when you say everybody's not communist, it doesn't matter if the techniques to indoctrinate children in atheism used by communists um, historically are now in our schools, which I believe they are in your British schools, are certainly found in American universities then yes, sir, even if you're not a communist, you can be a well-indoctrinated atheist using Marxist techniques. And we'll probably talk, we've talked about some of that, and we'll talk about it more. Um, either of you have any comments so far? This is something I may know more about than you do. Nope, I'm good. Yeah, I've got a Go lot of reading of, 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 um, of uh, dangerous regimes, and I'll even uh, mention to you but that's something I hope your readers will look at. A film I've been supporting. Martin, uh, yes, USSR. Martin in the USSR. Martin in the USSR.com. Uh, uh, people really should see this film. Well, they can't see it because they're still looking for uh, funding for it, um, although it's partly made. There's some great trailers on there. There's some great information. And part of it is something called The League of the Militant Godless. And what you'll find there is that uh, they use a lot of the same rhetoric uh, that comes out of the new atheists today, people yeah. like Dawkins and all those people. So yeah, you can do it. Uh, why don't we go ahead and give him another minute or so here, and I'll, I'll give him some more answers, okay? And I, I don't think you can, due to the meaning of the terms involved. Indoctrination is an attempt to instill a particular set of beliefs in someone by presenting them uncritically. Um, atheism is an absence of a belief, so you can't indoctrinate atheism because atheism isn't a belief. It's diametrically opposed to a belief. It's it's the opposite of a belief. It's disbelief. It's not believing. So, you know, categorically, you can't. You simply cannot indoctrinate someone into atheism. Okay. Okay. I know, let's let's chop it off there. Yeah. 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 That's a good bit. Look, look, you can you can define atheism any way you want. I'm not even I'm not, I don't even have that much of a problem with people uh, choosing these alternate weird definitions for atheism, but at least be consistent in in your in your fake definition. So if if you're going to define atheism as the absence of a belief, I don't like it, but but go ahead. I mean, you've, you've kind of made uh, atheism this kind of vacuous, empty thing, but sure. I, but it is atheists themselves who say, oh, atheists uh, believe in evidence and critical thinking, and we ascribe, we believe in the scientific method, and we believe in the in, you know, brotherly love of humanity or whatever. Atheists will define themselves in, in those kind of terms. So you can't ask you can't ask us to uh, uh, define to treat atheism like a non-belief if you yourselves don't treat atheism like a non-belief. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, well, uh, on the word indoctrination. <laughs> oh yeah, well, see, what, no, yeah. No, no. I mean, I, I mean, the, the thing is, I, I guess you know, you can we can talk about the formal indoctrination with communism, but the reality is, when you're raising children. You you pass your belief system to them naturally. Yes. You know they are not critical thinkers at age six or whatever. You know so whatever it is your your is in your home, you're teaching them just as just because you're a parent. That's what it exists. So if we take the loaded word indoctrination out, what we've got is a parent transmitting their values to their child. Yes. And in in that sense, in that moment. You know, that's where the the lack of belief just becomes total nonsense. I mean, you know, if if you lack belief in God, all right, well, then tell me what you're not doing. Well, you're not going to church, are you? Well, that's affecting, that's a positive action. You know, I am not, you know, we can say it negatively, but okay, you're, what are you doing? You're staying home on Sunday. I'll freeze it. <laughs> I'll freeze it in the positive, yeah. right? 
What what do you tell your so, kids when they when they ask why their why their friends are going to church and, and you're not? What would you say at that point? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and what's your answer? Yeah. You, you as, know, as soon as you say something like well, those are people who still believe in a Bronze Age fairy tale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> just stake the position, son. If you say anything like that at all, at all, if yeah, they're deluded. If you just suggest that they're silly, if you suggest that um, they're mistaken, you've just taken a position. Yes. It's no longer yes. just lacking belief. Yes. By the way, did, did you guys notice that he, he kind of furtively inserted a word in there when he was talking about indoctrination? He said, uncritically. Well, well, when you put this idea uncritically into their heads. No, that's not necessarily the case. You can furnish your child with reasons to believe such and such. It doesn't need to be uncritical acceptance. That's not part of the definition of, of indoctrination. I will, I will say that there are parents, there's something we call catechesis, which is basically teaching your child spiritual things. Um, and some parents are terrible at it. And some of the worst, frankly, are what I call, it, 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 there's some terrible parents, Catholic parents, don't get me wrong. But the worst usually are the ones who just say, just read the Bible and believe it. And by the way, if you believe it, you'll be saved. And if you don't believe it, you'll go to hell. Um, the, ca the Catholic version of that is follow the rules or you're going to hell. That's the <laughs> <laughs> if you take it from the Protestant to the Catholic, but yeah, it's the same thing. And, and, and the, the subject of what it takes to be saved versus go to hell is one that, 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 we, that Christians, including Catholics, have debated literally for 2,000 years. Um, the church catechism says ultimately we, aren't, we don't know. Um, but the, the, the classical tr Christian tradition is, is that, you know, the life in Christ, the Orthodox tradition is, is, is a life of growing closer to God and becoming a better person all through your life, uh, getting closer to God your whole life. We call it growing holy. Sorry if that's, uh, you don't like the spiritual language, but whatever. Become a better person closer to God all the time. Um, that's the ultimate Christian mission. Um, and it has a lot to offer in this life as well as the next, but whatever. Um, Bottom line is you've staked out a bunch of positions, um, and you're kind of retreating to the dictionary. Now, I will just mention, Grim, I happen to know you tend to be uh, skepti uh, critical of feminists and feminism. Have you ever noticed how often feminists will retreat to the dictionary definition because they don't want to defend anything they're actually saying? You know, feminism is about equality, that's all. Yeah, you're kind of doing that. Yeah. I kind of, I, I, I got, I've gone to a point online where I just simply will not have the discussion about defi definitions because it's a way to avoid a conversation. But they're not, they're not even using the definition from an actual dictionary. I think somebody strong armed the, uh, the uh, Google dictionary to, to redefine it as a lack of belief. But in any philosophical dictionary, in any Merriam Webster's Oxford dictionary, you will find the belief that God does not exist. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, I can tell you, I'm flashing on the screen now. This is from Eve Kaninen's site. She has her own, in addition to being part of a, uh, our team. Uh, but the, uh, this is a great article to go look for. It's on last Eden blog, Atheist versus Stanford Encyclopedia, still a classic. Uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which should be dispositive on this, uh, makes it abundantly clear they do not accept the, the lack of belief definition. You're also going to find most standard dictionaries, the big ones, do not accept that definition, or they'll add it as a secondary or third definition. The one they most that atheists most often like to quote is something called the Oxford Dictionaries. Just so people know, Oxford Dictionaries is not the Oxford English Dictionary, the OED that everybody knows. Uh, Oxford Dictionary is a, is a small side project, um, and you know they've got some people in there accepting that lack of belief definition. But even if you do use the word that way, as soon as I ask you, do you believe there's any God at all, you're going to have to take a position. Do you believe there's any God at all? And if you say, I don't know, you just went to agnostic. Um, so you can stop running behind the dictionary and why don't you talk about what you believe? Because I don't think you lack belief. I think you believe some things. Hmm. So that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he can come on. He come on anytime and talk to us. 
Shall, oh, oh, and this article on your site is particularly funny, too, because it talks about how uh, atheists from, like, our atheism, I think, you know, the same kind of people who hang out on Re Atheist Republic, you know, atheist forums where they all agree that they, they have no shared ideology or identity. Anyway, yeah, the, these organized atheists have tried several times to get Stanford Dictionary to change their mind. And the, the responses are public. Basically, the Stanford Dictionary philosophy people more or less laugh them off. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it's a useless, stupid definition that goes nowhere in a conversation. And all you're doing is playing words. Yeah. Like I said, that's only the definition they go to when, when they're asked to uh, to bear the burden of proof for, for proving God doesn't exist. They're, oh, I, I'm not saying God doesn't exist. I merely lack a belief. But they have no problem making all sorts of affirmations about atheists in other contexts. Yep. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny that the, the lack of belief is like, well, I'd really like to be agnostic, but I have an opinion, but I don't want responsibility for it. You know, I'm, I lack belief. Well, no, no, you have a belief. <laughs> you know, agnostic is I don't know. <laughs> but even though I don't have a belief, everyone who disagrees with me is stupid. We're going to yeah, give you some exactly. Specific, we're going to give some more specific references at the end of this, but let's go ahead and give him a little more time. See if he's got anything more to tell, to, to observe about us. Hang on. A particular point of view on atheism, and that's what would be happening in communist nations. That's probably the closest we'll have ever gotten. But what they were actually being indoctrinated with was communist beliefs about religion. Belief that religion is just a superstition, that there is no God, that it is a delusion, that it is an imagination, that science will give us all the answers. That's standard communist indoctrination talking points. Do you agree with them? If you agree with them, sir, you are also indoctrinated with this, whether you're a communist or not. Someone put all that in your head. And those are all positive affirmative beliefs you can't prove scientifically or otherwise. I see this so many times. I see this so many times. They, they try to offload all of that just into communism, even though, even though the communist rationale for trying to eradicate religion or trying to indoctrinate people with the idea that God doesn't ex exist is exactly identical to their own in 2017. Even though they pretend it's new and original yeah. and they yeah. thought of it themselves. Um, no. Yes, I, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the necessity for atheism was part of the party platform for the communists. So yes. it was its own discrete belief. You can't just offload it into, into, uh, into communism. And they were specific. Religion is yes. superstition. It's holding back progress. It's holding back science. It's a threat to sanity. It's a delusion. Those were specific talking communist talking points. Do you share those? Do you? If you do, you're more than just lacking belief, and you've staked out a position. And I would like you to defend any of those beliefs if you have them. Now, if you want to repudiate all those, maybe you're more uh, agnostic than you think. <laughs> and also autistic, yes. Well, <laughs> you know, I have some autistic traits, too. That's, that's why I can say that. He, he does seem a little autistic, too. No, not really. He's not that bad. He's really not. Let's give him a little more time. I, love the, I still love the athe fist of brains thing. That's, that's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, that. so badass. I know, it was. Uh, it really was. All right, let's go. A guitar lick to go in there. <laughs> All right, let's go. And, and so forth. They weren't being indoctrinated with atheism. They were being indoctrinated with anti-theism, anti I suppose. And, you know, and there are arguments we made against religion, and I would make lots of them, but I would never do it uncritically. But that's different to atheism. So how would you make kids atheists? And like I say, I don't, I don't think you can. What you can do is still not indoctrination, because if you teach kids critical thinking, you know, you're teaching them to think critically, and that will almost inevitably lead them not to believe in a god. Prove your claim! <laughs> That claim. Huh. That is the that is the more interesting uh, claim here. We would like to see you prove that rather than hash out all these like insipid atheism is just a lack of belief. We don't have to prove anything. We've heard that argument be made a million times. We haven't heard the argument why God is irrational, why critical thinking will lead you inexorably to atheism. We haven't heard that argument made for the first time. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, well, 
Yeah, yeah. well, it's just fascinating. I mean, the same. Uh, I was I was mentioning this to Rob earlier. You know, I I twitch anytime at this point in time when anybody tells me that they're going to teach other somebody else how to think critically. Yeah. Because what what they're saying is, no, actually, I'm going to teach you how to think. I think. You know, he's he's got a conclusion. He's just said his conclusion. If you think critically, you will think atheism. Mm. Well, no. I mean, critical thinking is you take information and you process it for yourself. So if I'm teaching critical thinking, I would expect to get a lot of different answers. Now, some may be more right than others. Well, he, in his defense, he may, you know, he may have stated that as an opinion. I think that if you teach critical thinking, it will lead people to atheism. But that's the wrong right answer, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're thinking critically, which is the code, the nice polite code word for thinking like me, yes. then, <laughs> you know, of course you'll be atheist. So, yes. you know, that's, that's what I just, I have no use for, you know, critical thinking anymore. I'm like, I mean, I have use for critical thinking, but not when people are like holding it up or I'm going to teach others because I'm like, no, stay away from my, me, my kid, whatever, you know, <laughs> be honest. Oh. That's, you know, that's the thing. Whenever people think critically or are rational or think evident or are evidence based in their thinking or in, or are intellectual or whatever, they don't feel the need to announce that they are critically thinking, rational, you know, intellectuals or whatever. They 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 prove that by their actions, by their words. Whenever people, whenever a person makes a big stink about how much of a critical thinker they are or how much of a rationalist they are. Already, the little uh, Dunning Kruger uh, klaxon goes off in my brain. I tend to think they they may be just about the least evidence based, rational, critical thinking, of the, and they probably have an agenda that they're trying to smuggle in here that they're maybe they're yep. not even aware of. Maybe they're not oh. even aware of the. Why are you? Yeah. Why are being? Why are you the rational thinker in the conversation in the first place? Why do you? Why do you get that license? Why? Why, why do you just come in and say, think you're that person? I'm going to go ahead and do this for Grimm and any of his listeners who are, are, are open-minded. I'm going to try and give you a few explanations. We are not evangelicals who run around pushing Jesus in your face and say, believe this or go to hell. We're just not those people. Um, and a lot of people never come to, uh, never ever come to God by, by looking at a Bible. Okay. God is a universal concept. I'll give you the simplest one I can come up with. It seems to help with a lot of people. God is the intelligent thing that makes the universe go, okay? Um, uh, it is, it, you know, God would be like infinite mind. That's why you wouldn't be able to see him or even it if you must. Um, uh, just it's what runs the laws of physics. It's what runs the laws of probability. If you get that through your head, you go, okay. A thing I will point out to you is that um, Zoroastrian religion reasoned this out. Uh, Greek philosophers like Plato, Aristotle uh, uh, laid this out. Uh, they thought something ultimately running things made the most logical sense. Um, something, you know, unmoved, eternal, is sort of like the base of reality. They all thought this had to be the case. It just happens to be that when you read certain holy texts, they match up with that concept. Mm -hmm. I would also tell you that uh, here's a book that scientifically demonstrates something that uh, most people have known for thousands of years. Um, this is a peer, This is a book full of peer-reviewed data by a Justin L. Barrett, uh, a, a, a completely respected researcher, um, with his own research and the peer-reviewed research of others, shows what people have known for thousands of years. Most children, not all, but most, um, between the ages of about two and four, develop a natural sense that something is making reality be here like something that may even be aware of us or me. And most children get a sense of that, something big. And most children can easily distinguish that from Santa Claus, fairy godmother, or, uh, imaginary friend, monster in the closet. They can distinguish those with little or no prompting. Because they get it once you explain the idea of God in that simple a term. Something's aware of us and something's running all of this. Some kids don't. It runs high in autistics. That they, they, they don't seem to have that sense. Uh, other people don't. I didn't for the longest time, but most people do. Um, and that, you know, uh, that's been documented in science. It's a natural intuitive belief most people have that something's running reality. 
Um, sometimes, and you can indoctrinate that out of them by simply telling them it's an imaginary fairy tale, that it's an invisible friend, that it's like Santa Claus or the monster in your closet. If you assert well, that to the child, of, huh? When you get a bunch of those people together, yeah. online echo chambers. Especially if you get a lot of people together in online echo chambers. But in reality, even children who, who are indoctrinated that way to ignore that feeling, to accept the idea that that must just be your imagination, you know, it should be denied. That would be one of the ways you do atheist indoctrination. You tell them to put that intuitive sense they have aside and that it's a delusion on their part. And the funny thing is a lot of people wind up religious anyway. Maybe that's because the, the indoctrination doesn't hold. Try listening to the interviews I did with Sarah Salviander, Sami Salviander, Sigart, and some of the others, or just ask me about it. I'm sorry, you really can be told not to believe something that is true. You just have to decide, is it true? Is there a God? I didn't say Jesus. I didn't say about Muhammad. I didn't say Allah. I didn't say any of that. I said, is there a God? Some intelligent thing running the universe. Most people have a sense of this, whether you do or not. The question is now, well, what do you think of that? Are you just going to dismiss it? Science even tells us it's a natural thing for people to intuit and posit. Do you? Um, the, and he also mentioned the Stoics, so I haven't read this, but I would say this book, Stoic Theology, Proof for the Existence of the Cosmic God and of the Traditional Gods. It's a book of Stoic Theology. Uh, Eve Kinnainen recommended it and said it was good. I believe Andrew Stratelites also liked it. I can't recall. Um, but in any case, um, this is most of the, you mentioned liking Stoics. Uh, most of the Stoics believed in God, at least in this classical sense I'm talking about, and thought there was ample reason to believe there were other spirit forces too. Were they stupid and primitive? Um, a lot of the Stoics, a lot of the best loved Stoics believed there had to be at least a God. Uh, it also, if you check the Bible, you'll find that St. Paul was arguing with the Stoics, it's in, in, in Acts or one of his letters. Um, I can find it for anybody who cares. But he's arguing with Stoics, and he quotes something out, some Stoic philo philosophical treaties to help prove, you know, to help get, you know, and he quotes these Stoics approvingly right in the Bible um, when he's trying to argue with them uh, and make the case for Jesus. Um, so the idea, you know, this primitive idea that uh, it's all, all choosing which which sky fairy to believe in it makes you look pretty primitive and and really pretty arrogant mm -hmm. like really kind of incurious is what i'd say it really really does because this is this is stuff bright minds have argued with over for thousands of years it's it, it actually speaks really poorly of someone who would just dismiss these very subtle ideas like this that some of the brightest minds who ever lived reasoned out that you had to have a god something has to ultimately be in charge or nothing makes sense that's a normal thing for humans to decide. It's one of the reasons religion is so popular and why atheism is so rare. So there. You guys got anything else you want me to want to add? You said it. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's give him one more minute. And I don't know if we need a whole lot more than this because well, let's just see. Yeah, that's not the end goal. The, the, the goal is to get kids to think critically to uh, apply their brains. Think critically about atheism. Think, but to teach them how to think effectively, how to think in a way that provides them with you know, realistic, logical, rational answers. And as an end result of that, I think atheism is, is virtually inevitable. So I think the whole question is, is nonsense. And it rests upon this fundamental misunderstanding of what atheism is. Now, I know Dean and others have been told repeatedly what atheism is, but they prefer to keep attacking this, this straw man. I don't think they're going to make any progress outside of their own smug, self-satisfied circles until they start <laughs> atheism as it actually is. And an atheist just said self, smug, self-satisfied <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Let's give him another moment. I guess I guess we are. Oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, you know. Yes, Graham, Graham, I gotta say, most of your community doesn't get it, and it's a real lack of uh, uh, of perspective on you guys's part. Seriously, yeah. Uh, your ideas. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, in the end, how can you? 
you know, it is it it, it does it, it does amaze me how often you come across atheists who clearly haven't done any reading. They keep treating yeah. like right now is like the only thing that's ever happened, and no, like nobody's ever asked these questions, you know. And yeah, you're. I'm sorry, you know, it turns out that Christianity, I'll, I'll pick on Christianity in particular, is, is standing on the shoulders of giants, okay, yeah. you know, yeah. and we thought through this, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, we woke up one day and just made it all up, so, you know. I mean, this does go back to, I know some people get that intuitive, natural feeling for God, and then they read the Bible, and for whatever reason, they make this big leap, and they're just convinced. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure they're very much a minority. I never had that experience. And I know plenty of other people who believe in God who don't really, even if they're Christian, who really reading the Bible isn't their favorite thing. They read it, they try and live by it, but they get more out of, you know, uh, lessons at church and, and listening to the sermons yeah. and uh, maybe even reading some of the lighter authors. Because the honest truth is the Bible's not always easy, easy reading either. I, I like <laughs> If I am about to grant the atheist anything, I, I do like that meme that says uh, athe that Christians treat the Bible like the Apple terms of service. They just scroll to the bottom and, cl and click agree. Well, <laughs> there's, some, there's some of that. And, you know, actually, as much as you, jo as much as you joke, I mean, I don't think it's every Christian's job to, to memorize every word of that thing. I really don't. That's a, there's a, some, 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 a subset of Christians who are like that, but they're, they're like – I pretty much have to know it all and be able to fling out a random verse from Deuteronomy on demand kind of Christian. Um, most people aren't like that. Well, well, they're not like that. I mean, like, you know, when I was agnostic and I was thinking about coming back to the church, uh, I got Catholicism for dummies. <laughs> I guess, I don't know if that makes me smug getting Catholicism for dummies, but that's, you know, that's what I was reading. And that's a great starting point. And then you go like, so say C.S. Lewis, which is, you know how lots of you know lots of people you know i was surprised like i always i was always starting to move back towards catholicism i was hanging out with all these catholics and they kept bringing up c.s lewis and i was like isn't that the chronicle of narnia guy <laughs> you know and i was like i didn't even realize he had this huge pile of apologetics yes that are you know completely readable and you know i'll listen to these people and i think you haven't even heard of c.s you know you've never even heard of c.s lewis for goodness sakes you know like one of the more readable modern apologetics there, uh, there's out there, right? Well, yeah, I, I also hear so many atheists say, well, no one who has seen the light of atheism can ever go back to their primitive religious superstition. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, hold up C.S. Lewis as, 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 a, as a great counterexample or, or Alistair McGrath or anyone. These are people who were atheists. They said the same things you are saying now and they still changed their minds and decided that Christianity or Catholicism was more reasonable. Well, C.S. Lewis was actually an Anglican, Church of yeah. England, which always disappointed his good friend J.R.R. Tolkien. But if you actually read these men, you know they weren't stupid men. Um, and, and, and really, even if he went into Church of England, they, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be quibbling with much that we're saying, if, if they're mm -hmm. serious. Um, uh, you have actually a very deep intellectual and cultural tradition there um, that you're just kind of glossing over. Um, I'll say for the record, I don't like reading C.S. Lewis either. Um, I find him a little dry, which is strange. A lot of Christians hear me say that and they go, <gasps> uh, <laughs> You're not allowed to not like C.S. Lewis. <laughs> it's just not well, me, possible. <laughs> but the interesting thing, yeah, he, he's a little dry to me, and he goes on and on and on sometimes to me. But you know what? Every time one of my C.S. Lewis Christian friends quotes C.S. Lewis to me, I love what they're quoting to me, and I have read some of it. I like The Great Divorce, which is a good one on the concept of hell, by the way. There's a great divorce. Yeah, um, yeah it is. I mean, yeah, if, if anybody, uh, that's, hell is where I started. You know, if anybody ever, you know, is like, oh, I'm still really sketchy on this God thing. I'm not feeling it. Usually you can wrap yourself around the concept of hell first and work out from there. And The Great Divorce is really good at taking imagery of fire and brimstone is coming right straight from the gospels but it means something more than that it means something more than physical suffering and the great divorce does a great job of pulling it into a, like a modern context and making hell just that real you know everybody's walk through a city street 
at some point you at see, night. You see, you know, and yeah, you see people embracing darkness. You see them doing yeah. it. You see people who hate themselves and hate the world. And you see them get worse and worse and worse as they age. Mm -hmm. Yes. A common trait among atheists, I must say, including some, <laughs> yeah, a very common trait among atheists. Get more bitter, more cynical, more nasty, more hateful towards the world. Toward the, and they almost ultimately hate themselves. And that's kind of like, yeah, you're just kind of wanting to go to hell, aren't you? You are yeah. wanting to destroy yourself. You hate yourself. You hate reality. Um, um, uh, Maybe you've never seen it in people. I sure have. I, uh, oh, I, yeah, I have. Yeah. I mean, I have too. I mean, that's where it. And I've been there, actually. I've been there. I was there at one time. Um, I mean, I didn't want to be, but it was hard not to get cynical and jaded about everything. Yeah. You know. Um, but anyway, I don't know if we, I don't know. Should we give him another minute here? Or, or is he said I, I, we, I think we could, we could plow through this. Let's plow yeah. through so we can just let him finish out. And I keep running into this in arguments and debates on Twitter as well. They insist that atheism isn't just the absence of belief in God, but it's all atheism is strong atheism, it's the belief that there is no God, which isn't true. There are there are hardly any strong atheist, Gnostic atheists. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, well, see, the problem... The problem here is that when you redefine, and yes, you are redefining uh, atheism as a lack of belief, you've left yourself without a good word to describe the people who, who affirm God's non-existence. Uh, so, I mean, he does agree that they are a certain uh, a brand of atheists, that, that the hard atheists are a type of atheist. So, taking that alone, we could say, yes, it's possible to indoctrinate people into atheism, if if hard atheism is a type of atheism, you can say, well, you're indoctrinating them into into hard atheism, even just foregoing uh, everything we said before. But yeah, hardly hardly any atheist is a gnostic atheist. I mean, I mean, you've you've never heard a uh, 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 an atheist try to use the uh, omnipotence paradox or something, or say God can't be all all just and all merciful, or try to disprove God uh, in that kind of type of way, you know. An ontological disproof. Those are Gnostic atheists. Yeah, and I've met them. They're almost always Marxists, and they're very hardcore, and they're very nutty. Um, um, but I find most of your more casual atheists, like you here, Jim, you just uh, uh, you you do talk just like them and think just like them. I mean, you do. I'm not even picking on you. I'm telling you, you do. You say you just lack belief, but then you'll come out and say a bunch of things about religion that indicate a clear belief that there's no God. Yeah. And, yeah, and that there's no afterlife and, and all that that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, the thing is, you know, I've never met him. His persona comes through as being kind of a very mellow persona. Yeah. But you know, when I think about this, I, you know, because I have I've met atheists who I would consider basically rather agnostic than atheist, but they've they've made a decision. But they are not. The difference I the line I draw is. They're not trying to incorporate it in part of, as part of their identity, and they're not actively trying to tear down or convince other people that they have the right yeah. uh, viewpoint, right? Yeah. The very fact he's sitting here on YouTube with this cute little beginning, I put him the in the militant category, you know, that, you know, the fist thing, you know, or whatever in the beginning. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're trying to convince somebody of something. I yes. mean, lack of, you know, it go on about lack of belief, right? Would be like, you know, 30 minutes of a blank screen. So, you're trying to, <laughs> you know, you're trying to convince somebody of something. That's and yeah, you're in that category. Even if you think you're mellow. I knew agnostics. I knew atheists, like I said, who really, they stayed away from the God thing. They stayed away from the religion thing because they saw some benefit in it. If they, even if they didn't get it, you know, they yeah. quietly thought it was, it didn't make any sense. They yeah. saw the value. And, and they stayed out of it. So, and we're going to have to wrap up in the next five minutes or so here. So I'm going to go ahead yeah. and because I think we've hit everything he has to say of substance. If you feel we missed something important, let me know. I don't think we did. We all watched the video a couple once or twice. Um, yeah. So I'm going to give this to you, Jim. I don't want to, Graham. I'm going to dare you to get anybody in the atheist community to come and talk to me about this. I just gave you a definition of God that doesn't require any religion and that is universally understood by most religions, even Hindus, 
and many Buddhists, as well as people who have no religion and are just philosophical, most human beings believe something intelligent is running things. Whether it's aware of us or not is another question, but that the idea that something big and intelligent is running everything. Uh, here's a book I'll recommend, The Science of God, The Convergence of Scientific and Biblical Wisdom. Um, it's written by a very eminent a scientist, a uh, very accomplished physicist, Gerald L. Schroeder, and he puts out a lot of scientific information to believe in this. I will also point out to you that I can give you evidence in cosmology, including the Big Bang, uh, the cosmological constants, the universal geometric mean, and in another area of science, I can talk to you about evidence from near-death experience. Mm -hmm. All of these taken together point to the idea that it is reasonable and rational to think something run intelligent may be running things. So is the digital physics theory of the universe. These are all in convergence on one point. They are all evidence that something intelligent is running things. Now, sir, do you think something intelligent is running things? Uh, and if you say no, that's an atheist. If you say maybe, well, then you're agnostic, and maybe you should get more curious. Is something running intelligent running things at all? What do you think? Um, take a position. I'd like to hear it. Um, and if there's more evidence you want to examine, let me know. But please do us all a favor and don't claim there is no evidence. I just gave you a bunch. Are you ready to debunk it all? Why? You got any justification for debunking all of it? And if you're in debunking mode, are you really an agnostic or are you truly an atheist who's trying to prove there's no God, even though there's abundant evidence of one? Yeah. By and the way, uh, uh, I also just want to say, uh, uh, if you're going to say, I merely lack a belief in God, but everyone who does believe in God is, is stupid and just accepted their beliefs uncritically, it's really hard to believe that you're completely non-prejudicial on the subject, you know? Yep, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we we're so uncritical... Well, I, well, we just asked you some critical questions. Why don't you respond to those critical questions? You're welcome to. We're not hostile, really. What we do do is shit post. But I will also add to you that you're part of a community that includes people who shit post a lot. Uh, you guys love arrogant people like Christopher Hitchens, Daniel Bennett, Sam Harris, Sargon of Akkad. You love these snotty, sarcastic, condescending people who are supposedly critical thinkers. May I point out to you that we are just doing that to you. I can take that off and stop being a snot, but that's all I'm doing. That's all we do is we're sarcastic and pick you apart, which is exactly what these atheists do. And they're kind of rude about it. Well, so are we. You know why? Because we're taken by being treated like children. We do have rational reasons to believe what we believe. You don't have to share it, but we got all kinds of evidence that convinces us is that good enough for you? And would you like to discuss it further? You don't have to come Catholic. I'll give you 20 sources that aren't even Christian you can start chewing on. And, and if you claim that there is no rational argument for, for God or you claim that there is no evidence for God, you've just made some uh, affirmative claims right there. That's right. You've staked a position. Yeah. So it won't be lack of belief anymore. You'll be saying, I believe that's not evidence. I believe that's yeah. not yeah, whatever it is. You'll be staking a position. Own it, whatever it is. What are you afraid of? Nothing stops me from understanding rationality and science, no, no, nor anybody else here. In fact, Answer, don't you have a degree in geology or something? Uh, yes, I do, actually. <laughs> you have a degree in geology? I do have a degree in geology. Well, there you go. Um, plus, she's good at math, too. Probably better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I are smart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rob, you got any closing remarks? No, nope, I'm good. All right, everybody. Well, please subscribe to the, the Deflating Atheism channel. Please subscribe to the Max Kolbe channel. The Escaping Atheism channel is currently on a phony DMCA strike. Um, uh, please support us on escapingatheism.com. Uh, say hi to Catherine when you get there. Uh, support us on Patreon. We do need your. We do need financial assistance to get better production values, and so we can put more time into this. All right, everybody. Well, um, uh, let's go ahead and close this out. Stupid technology. Stupid technology. There we go. All right. God bless everybody, and uh, Ave Maria. <laughs> <laughs>